If like me, you love starting right off the bat with the best possible setup, then I have something for you, this best starter pack for 3D point cloud processing to make sure that you have everything to be in the best possible condition to process this magnificent ensemble of data points. Hi, my name is Florent, I'm a spatial science professor and the head of the course director of the 3D Data Academy. Without further ado, let's get started onto this 3D state pack. So basically, the goal is to give you all the tools, the software, the coding side, and also the setup so that you can get right onto developing very nice processing pipelines for 3D point clouds. There will be hardware uh, recommendations, software recommendation, and coding recommendation. All right, all of that within 10 minutes, hopefully. So let's get started. The first element will be a software and it's called Cloud Compare. So if you've never heard of it, it's a magnificent piece of software that was created in 20, uh, 2006 by Denial Gerard Mondo, part of the EDF group in France. And now it's more than ever active and it also along, uh, allows binding Pythons, for example, to, to Cloud Compare. So to get your hands on it, you just go onto cloudcompare.org on the download section, you get the software for your specific OS and then you install everything. Once it's installed, that's how it looks like. You can import the file directly from here, right? And then you will have your point cloud here in the database tree. And here on, on the view side, you can visualize your point cloud. So that's an indoor point cloud captured by a mobile laser scanning system called Navis, all right? So that's a very cool software that basically will be the core of all your processing. If you need to visualize, if you need to do some small processing to explore something uh, very quickly, that would be my go-to recommendation. Now, the second software is a bit more um, geospatial oriented and it's called QGIS. To get your hands on QGIS or QGIS, or I like to call it, then you head over QGIS.org again. That's an open source initiative and you don't know the one that is best suited to your OS. Then installing everything, you will get onto this nice uh, little UE and there you have the ability to, you know, import by clicking here, you can import point cloud. And I just took one that is this one. It will uh, display exactly like this. And what is very nice is you have the spatial context whenever your point cloud is georeferenced, then you will see that it's nicely aligned with an open street map layer, right? And if by any way you want to visualize how it uh, handles 3D, you can go on to 3D and you can create a 3D view just like this. Um, and then going on to, yeah. And you have your 3D view that is just there. I needed to wait for it to display. And as you can see, it creates a nice overlay between the um, layer here and this one. So it's very cool if you're in this context. QGIS will be my go-to recommendation whenever you are dealing with a geospatial application where you need to, to make some kind of queries or handle different types of modalities like raster data sets, vector data set, and point clouds. That's a very, very nice piece of software. My third recommendation is something if you want to move to the web. And to go to the web, there is this tool called Pottery. Uh, you go on github.com slash pottery slash pottery two times, and you will arrive onto this website by Marco Schutz that created uh, this piece of software that is actually based on another software that was uh, created at TUVN, which is called Scanopy, right? So the, the cool stuff about that is that you can then just push basically point clouds onto the web, and there is a data structure that will allow handling all the points, which is called uh, modifying nested oak tree, which will allow you to have a real-time um, interaction with your point cloud. So that is very cool. To get your hands on it, you just go here on release, pottery, and uh, here you have different stuff that you can take. So you can take this pottery, or you have another version of pottery, which is called pottery desktop, for example, which is this one. Same, you can download the release, and uh, you can just unzip it, and it will create a specific uh, pottery renderer for you. So if you want to check out how that looks, let me show you. The Pottery desktop, that is what you have. So you have such a uh, viewer, and then I would just drag and drop. You can drag and drop LAS or LAZ files. So if I have one like this one, I just drop it here. And I say indexing in the Pottery 2.0 uh, version, and I will let it uh, go here as well. So the conversion is finished now loading. I cannot go uh, within it because it's an initiative with the University of Twente that we are working together on. More on that later. So this is Pottery Desktop. The same applies for the web version, where if I just go onto Pottery, for example, you have also the Pottery GitHub here. And if I click there, yes. And here, for example, that is a point cloud that is on the web, and you can see it describes a very big area. 
So this software, I will use it for sharing your creation with other people very easily and giving them access to tools like measurements, like uh, taking some kind of surface or extracting things or creating profile. So basically uh, visualizing and a bit interacting with the point cloud in full 3D on the web without having them depending on their specific um, specific configuration. After Poetry, there is Blender. And Blender is very known for, um, let's say, working in the computer graphics community, but it's not thought specifically for Point Cloud. But I can already confidently say that you have a very nice way to deal with Point Cloud there inside. So to get started with it, you just import a PLY Point Cloud. And already here I can show you a way to do that. Um, one of the big file format is at the LAS. And Whenever you go through these different uh, layers or different steps, one way to convert point cloud to different formats is using Cloud Compare. Whichever format it can open, then you can then just save it and you have a list of possible exports. And here you can use PLY Mesh, you can save it as binary or ASCII. You can make it ASCII for now and uh, that will be it. You will have uh, point cloud in a new file format that you can then open if it's PLY within Blender. And that's how it looks after having run some kind of geometry node processing where I wanted each point to be a little cube, as you can see. So for that, you have uh, the possibility basically to go into geometry nodes and you can check out what I did is I created a new geometry node with instances on point and realized instances. And the second stuff that I did is I created a cube right with set material to create stuff you just go and add and you add something and then on the shading side which is here I created this little path to get the attribute if I had an attribute here it looks like I do not this is why they are all like this but already here we can see that we have some uh, cool stuff and then finally you can go onto the rendering side and render your point cloud to have some nice um, you know uh, snapshots which are better than just a snapshot on your um, desktop but actually a rendering right then after blender we can move on to another fantastic piece of software which is called mesh lab all right this again is an open source initiative and you just go on meshlab.net and they say that it's for processing and editing 3d triangular mesh uh, but you can actually use it for point clouds as well so This is how it looks like. It looks a bit out, outdated, but don't be mistaken by that. You can then directly, for example, use the same point cloud that I had into Blender and use that here. And as you can see, it will display my point cloud pretty nicely. And you can here also play with how you want to render uh, your point cloud, like uh, with a depth map or... And here you have a lot of ways to uh, automatically edit your point cloud with mesh processing algorithm. You have some point cloud processing algorithm, but for that, I will do that in Cloud Compare. Here, you really need to focus on this uh, point cloud to mesh aspect in kind of an automated way. And basically, that's it. At this stage, you already have these five beautiful pieces of um, software, which is Cloud Compare, QGIS, Pottery, Blender, and Mesh Lab. With that, you can do pretty much anything as long as it goes toward processing um, 250 max million points. If you move above the threshold, then you will need to move on to, let's say, a um, professional software with a paying license. So at this step, the running cost for all of this is zero dollars, which is fantastic. You can always contribute to this open source initiative, but as a starting pack on the software set, that's the best bet you can do. And with that, you are sure you can work at least three years without a any time worrying about uh, did you show the right uh, software stack or not. Then the second element, and I also chose that to be relatable with the software stack, are the coding side because using tools, using that is already a big um, advance into point cloud processing, but having the ability to code exactly custom functions or things like this, we need to rely onto a, a code language. And here I chose Python. So I guess you already know about Python, but it's very easy to get into. Um, I have a lot of courses that dive onto Python for 3 data, so don't hesitate to go onto the 3D Data Academy if you want already to jump onto the other side of being an expert. But yeah, basically Python is, is um, pretty cool from data processing to data science to deep learning. You can do pretty much everything. It's not as fast as C++, but the learning curve or getting on it if you never coded or anything, it's very easy. All right, so to install Python, we can use um, what we call an um, environment management, which is Miniconda or Anaconda, which is the most famous one, but Miniconda will make sure that you have only the minimal amount of libraries. It's very easy to get that and it will come 
with a Python version pre-installed. So here, if I click on this link, you can see that I can choose for my OS a mini Canva version. I would not recommend to get onto the latest Python version, but 3.9, 3.10, or at the time you're visualizing this video, just don't take the latest but one below. So that you will be able to work with uh, most of the libraries out there because you do not want to code everything from scratch. You will be using some kind of libraries for 3D point cloud processing. And already at this stage, uh, once we installed uh, mini conda we will be able to create an environment and install some specific libraries which are numpy for a numerical computation matplotlib to plot within the environment within python open 3d to manage uh, 3d data sets like point clouds meshes foxes things like this and lastpy to be able to use las laz file format which is um, the go-to file format if you're working with large point cloud all right so all of that can only build if you have a piece of equipment that will be the only thing that you will need to invest in is a nice computer. So um, configuration wise for your computer here are my recommendation. You should have at least one terabyte of free space on your uh, hard drive. You should have a GPU which is Nvidia because when moving toward um, deep learning we will need to use what is called CUDA but more on that later and you will need some RAM uh, which is at least 16 gigabytes of RAM, up to 32 gigabytes of RAM, and the GPU. Right now, I would advise a 3070 at least, or a 4070, or whichever uh, line gets you up to that. And I looked on a very nice website, I'm not affiliated, but that's where I got my computer, for example. It's called Sila Tech if you're in Europe and um, they have marvelous prices. So a very cool configuration that I saw with a 3070, 32 gigabytes of RAM, the Windows OS and AMD Ryzen 7 is up uh, to grab for 1.5 uh, kilo dollars, so 1,500 dollars, which is magnificent because you're sure that for the next five years, at least you will be up and ready to uh, attack any point cloud processing scheme. Right, so overall, we covered there's a nine point that will constitute your starter pack. You have software, the five pieces of software that I detailed, being Cloud Compare, um, QGIS, Potri, Blender, MeshLab. We have a coding environment, which is Python, which you can install very quickly with Anaconda or Miniconda and four libraries. And then you need a computer for that all to work together. Remember that choosing all of this is very um, future, future proofed because basically all the software have Python bindings, so you can code and link that to any software, whether it's Blender, whether it's Cloud Compare, or MeshLab, or uh, QGIS. I can show you here some stuff. So here you have all the scripting possible in Cloud Compare. Here you have the scripting possible in um, QGIS and in Blender. You have also the scripting that allows you to do some kind of cool stuff. Right, so not to leave you high and dry and to make sure that you have all possible uh, under your hands, um, I created a page on the 3D Ad Ad Data Academy. That's where I will uh, link all the content so that it's easy for you to, to, to find it. Uh, just down below, you will find all the links for getting access to the resources. So the resources are the following. You will get access to sample data sets so that you can do what I did with Point Cloud and see how that plays out. Um, I will also give you a document that lists all the specific software and so that uh, I detailed in this video with all the links to, 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 the, to the different websites. And I think that would be uh, good enough. Of course, the next step will be to just go on this page and uh, get your hands on it to play around with all of this. If you're interested in more of that, um, it's starting this um, way of sharing knowledge on this specific topic around 3D Tech Vibes, then please subscribe to the channel that will help me and leave comments below about what uh, it did for you and what you would like to see next. And I will be working on it right away. Again, thanks a lot for following up this video and hope this starter pack will definitely propel you to 3D point cloud processing. Magnificent advancement. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.